Wow, Jimmy Stewart, it's, it's a real honor. Thanks so much for agreeing to help us out with our intro today. Well, who are you? I'm, I'm, I'm Tom Lahure. We, we, we spoke on the phone. I'm, I'm hosting a show called uh, Sunset. Yeah, I know. You told me that. Yeah, okay, great. So I was thinking that... What else are you? What are you... You a hypnotist? Uh, no, some have called my performances quite best for icing, though. But uh, other than that, no. I do sell spoons on the weekend, though. Well, then why am I seeing all these strange things? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. My, uh, my garage flooded on the weekend and uh, had nowhere to put my ceramic cat collection that I'm mining for a friend. But anyway, I was thinking that uh, we could do a scene from It's a Wonderful Life for the intro, but then I, I figured out it's not Christmas, so our Christmas special is next week. Uh, so your character doesn't really have an identity. Oh, what do you mean, no identity? My name's George Bailey. Yeah, well, I was thinking that now your name could be Ted Tedlington, and you're really excited about this week's episode, uh-huh. And uh, your agent also said that uh, it'd be okay if you said we're the best thing since sliced bread. Well, uh, so I was thinking, whenever you're ready, we can start on the big opening dance number. Oh, this is some sort of a funny dream I'm having. So long, Mr. I'm going home. Oh, well, wait a second now. We can scrap the bit about the sliced bread. You, you, you're, you, you're crazy. That's what I think. You're, you're screwing. Well, I prefer quirky, actually. But if you want, I can be Ted Tedlington. You're driving me crazy, too. I'm seeing things here. I'm going home and see my wife and family. You understand that? And I'm going home alone. All right, well, well, we'll do it the original way then. We'll do the original scene. You want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it. I don't think he's coming back. We should, we should probably just start. G'day, guys. Welcome to Sunset, the only evening breakfast show. So, first off on the show this week, we got news that a nickname epidemic is hitting Sydney with words like povo. Servo, Schnitty, Jockey Bicky, and Smoko getting thrown around. Our researchers have put together an educational clip to show you the effects of the epidemic. <sighs> what a bonzo of a plan. Still can't believe he's gone. Look around, mate. The bloody finest pub in Alice Springs is all ours. Yeah, love, it was a real rip snort of a plan, if I do say so myself. Originally just thinking of poisoning Schnitty at the pub, but. Cutting the brake lines on his holding VL, so we went and had a bingle. That was a real butte plan too. The bloody hell's going on here? Jono, you're supposed to be dead. Holy dooly! What's the matter, Robbo? You surprised to see me? Robbo, you drongo. You were supposed to cut the brake lines, you bloody gala. Struth, I disabled the duva lackey. Apparently not, you dropkick. Look, I'm about as ropeable as a frog in a sock right now. But don't worry, I got the last laugh. What do you want about, mate? Well, after having a fair dinkum tack bomb, ran into the postie. Walked his ear off a bit. Now all of the outback knows what you've done. <laughs> Hashtag hosting like a bus. <laughs> Hashtag sunset. Hashtag all righty then. <laughs> and send. <laughs> Welcome likes. Oh, oh, alrighty guys and gals, time to break out the popcorn and feast on the latest entertainment news. Joining us again is our entertainment news correspondent, Caitlin Charles. G'day, Caitlin. Oh, Tom, I'm currently reporting from outside the house of Johnny Depp. And, and why are you there, Caitlin? Aren't you supposed to be in Uzbekistan? I was, Tom, but after I heard of the comments made of Mr Depp on this show last week, I just had to come over and apologise to him. I'm disappointed in you, Tom. After that dog scandal recently, he doesn't need another reason not to come to Australia. Well, that's, that's awful big of you, Caitlin. Now, uh, you, you've got to apologise then, I take it? No, Tom. After stalking his house all this week, I couldn't see him. But I did build a shrine to him and I'll be leaving him this photo. Well, I'm, I'm sure he'll want to come back now. Right, and I think you'll love it. He better. Wow, okay. Uh, anyway, I think we better get on with the news. Uh, what have you got for us today? Well, Tom, I do have some news, but it may upset you. Oh, I'm a big boy, Caitlin. I'm, I'm sure I can handle it. Okay, the overly popular Minion movie has just joined the Elite Billion Dollar Club, making it the third highest grossing animated movie of all time. With the film still yet to be released within regions over the next few weeks, this could see the Minions topping Toy Story 3 to fill the number two spot. See? Not upset. Just, just very, very angry. I'm not sure I like you when you're angry, Tom. Ah, uh -huh. uh, Hulk reference. Nice. 
Uh, but come on, people. How can a movie about oversized yellow Tic Tacs make more money than Toy Story 3? It's just crazy. Well, it isn't as crazy as the next piece of news. With the next iteration of Jeremy Clarkson's new show with Amazon, reports are that his salary is now going to be 10 times what he got paid on Top Gear. This equates to over $20 million, making him the highest paid UK TV host. So there's a lesson for you kids. Punch your boss and you get paid more money. <laughs> you, you heard it here first, people. All the best in entertainment and lifestyle news. Thank you, Caitlin, for that report. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Tom, and take care. <laughs> Minions, can't believe it overrated Tic Tacs. Buzz is going to be so mad, he's going to go to infinity and beyond, he will. <sighs> anyway, uh, now we cross to sunny days for the weather. Now, Sonny, are you ready for the, for the weather this week? Oh, um, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, good work, Sonny. Now onto the weather. <sighs> Thanks, Tom. Now, from last week, I have really read up on the Bureau of Meteorology, and it's quite an umbrella organisation, I can tell you. So, let's get the Stratus update on the weather this week. As we can obviously see, <laughs> there is a high-pressure system coming in, so I would advise a lot of... Yoga and relaxation from Tuesday to Thursday. Then we have some low pressure system on its way. So get super excited for that and plan a big relaxing party. Finally, we should see some fog on the weekend. However, the sun should come out so that fog won't be missed. Now, technically what I've just told you is the future weather for the week, but I think we can do a little bit better. You see, my twin sister is currently in the field, in the not so distant future, to give us a weather and traffic report that we won't need for another few years. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Tom? Isn't that a bit pointless? <laughs> no, Tom. You see, what did the Camula say to the Stratus? I don't see what that has to do with my quest. Uh, why are you precipitating? Oh, <laughs> very funny. Uh, fine, I guess I, I could precipitate. I mean, participate in your future forecast. That's the spirit, Tom. Now, T, how are things in the future? Apocalyptic. Well, that's very good, but what is the weather like? It looks like it's nice, bright and sunny. Uh, desolate and sweltering. Well, there you go, folks. In the year 2050, the weather will be nice, warm and sunny. Ah, uh, finally, the global warming will really come into its own. Well, T, I'll let you finish with the future traffic. Well, uh, there is no traffic along the space-time continuum. Only a few crazy drivers, a single silver car and a blue box. I think I saw a steam engine too, but apart from that, nothing. No terrible accident to speak of, unfortunately. So back to you in the studio, Tom. Alrighty then. Well, I guess that's weather and traffic. So if you're sick of your daily commute, I guess you've got to get yourself a time machine. Uh, then you can arrive before you leave. But for now, we'll have to leave you for the short ad break, but we'll be back after this. Hi everyone, I'm Max McLean, the showrunner of Sunset, and this is the host, Tom LaHuro. Hello! Anyway, we're talking to you tonight because we love the show, don't we Tom? Oh, we sure do, Alex, and we want to keep making it. That's right. Now, although we planned for three episodes, we've actually blown through our entire budget on just two episodes on the lighting alone. I'm afraid it's true. I've had to start selling myself on the street just to cover the cost of these expensive props. Yeah. Anyway, do we do every show needing some sort of Christmas theme while asking you, the viewer, to make it happen? Just by pledging what you consider loose change, you can make all the difference. That's right, Tom. By getting a minimum amount of $400, not only will you be keeping our lights on, but you'll get a Macca's date with the man himself, Tom LaHuro. You can have anything on the menu. Anything at all. Fantastic, Tom. And for our extra special pledges, those who pledge over $1,000, will give you a personalised handshake. You not only get that, but you'll get a chance to appear on the very Christmas special that you helped make. So just call the number on your screen and start pledging now. Oh no, not that number, that's the wrong number. Um, oh, that's, yep, yeah, that number. Be get pledging. No, it really is only just a Macca's date. I don't know where you got that idea from. I mean... It... Ew. I, I don't care how much you're offering. Okay, good day, sir. Jeez. All right, yes, welcome back everybody to Sunset. The show that's sometimes a bit scrambled, but not as much as your eggs. Uh, now let's check in with Kayla to find out about all things social media. Kayla. Thanks, Tom. Glad to be back for another round of social media here on Sunset. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm not coming over there today. My, my legs hurt from sitting down for so long. 
Yeah, all right. I think it's better this way anyway. Hey, that's me. Moving on. Thanks. Let's start today with an email we received from our good friend Jim. Jim says, hey guys, loved the first episode. Just wanted to ask if you guys have a studio audience. I would love to come sit in and watch. Well, Jim, you see, we can't just let anyone into our studio. You need to have proven you've lived in Western Sydney for at least 30 years and earn over 80,000 a year before you will even be considered for our studio audience. Yeah, plus I'd have to follow you around for like a week and see what you like. Tom, I thought you were sitting this one out. Oh <laughs> yeah, whoops, sorry. Anyway, Jim, once you've filled all that criteria, you can email us with all your pay slips, credit card information, and a birth certificate attached to the email. Thanks. What are you trying to do, scam them to get a home loan? I mean, get a good job that pays good money. Thanks, Joe. Moving on, we have a few tweets to read. The first one up is from at James 49 who says, what's with the crazy set you guys have? Hashtag what the duck. Wait, 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 wait. Did I just say hashtag what the duck? Yeah, that's what I have here. I mean, our set is created by the professionals every week. They put every detail into it to make it most appealing to you. Well, yeah, it, it takes them like four hours, to, four hours, you see, to do. But it's worth it because it takes the attention away from me, which is good. All right, Tom. Okay. Well, we have time to read it. one more tweet, I think. At Dayoled says, hashtag what the duck sunset. What's with the duck in all the shots? Wait, wait, hang on. There it is again. What, what does that mean? I don't know what they're talking about. I don't see a duck anywhere. What? Neither do I. But maybe there's one over here. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> anyway, that's all the time we have for social media today. Don't forget to keep writing into us. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Kate. Oh, hang on. I forgot to mention I have an appointment tonight, Tom, with the Facebook boss. So um, I won't be on the lounge this afternoon, but have fun. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg, I love that guy. Can, can, can I come? Oh, it's, uh, it's not him. It's the other one. The, um, so you definitely shouldn't come. Anyway, bye. Hmm, yes. Well, while I continue to look for this so-called duck, uh, let's find out the latest from the sports world. What's news, guys? I don't invite you to my family thing for you to do something like that. I didn't think they Your would do it. Stop cutting me off! I just, you gotta just... Hey, you two! We're on <clears throat> Sorry, everyone. My, uh, <coughs> lovely co-host and I were having a little discussion about how he conducts himself on air and not cutting me off this episode. Whoa, whoa, don't be a bad sport now. <laughs> anyway, what's new in the news? Yes, well, anyway, as a result of the recent poor performance in the Bledisloe Cup by the Australian Rugby Union team, the Wallabies, Prime Minister Tony Abbott has announced plans to make New Zealand a new state of Australia in an effort to make Australia's rugby team a bit better. In the press conference that was held last night to announce these plans, Mr Abbott stated that New Zealand aren't a real country anyway, they're kind of like our Canada. <laughs> Wait, is this a joke? No, why? <laughs> The people of New Zealand for years have been putting up with Australians claiming New Zealand's best as their own, but this is, this is too far. Oh please, name one. Russell Crowe, Keith Urban, Pavlova. Oh yeah, yeah, what's the big problem? I'm a Kiwi. You mean the fruit? No. No, I think he means the bird. No, 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 he definitely means the fruit. Hey Jordan, do you think it's weird that some people eat the furry part of the Kiwi? I mean, it's like eating a giant huntsman spider, isn't it? Huh? You don't eat the furry part. Shut up! No, I am not a kiwi fruit and no, I'm not a freaking bird. I am from New Zealand. Where? New Zealand? New Zealand, you know, the place where that movie about hobbits and dragons and stuff was filmed and also stop cutting me off. This is exactly what we are talking about before. Hey Brandon, I'm trying to do my math homework. Uh, do, you, do you know what 3 plus 3 equals? <sighs> huh? Who's that guy? I don't know man, but he seems to think he's a fruit or something though. Weird. Anyway, I guess that's all we have time for. Back to you, Tom. Hmm, that's one fruity, birdie kind of guy. But now we have joining us in the studio a man who doesn't think he's any kind of flora or fauna. It's the wonderful Jacob, here with another great offer. Hey, thanks Tom. Great to be back in the studio to share another exciting product with your viewers. Well, what have you got for us today, Jacob? So last week you saw the Tech Blender 3003. We sold over 200 of those bad boys in the first half hour, so we know you guys loved it. This week we thought we would bring you something you would like just as much, maybe even more. Whoa, stop wasting time, Jacob. What have you got for us? Alright, Tom. Alright. Here we go. It's the brand new DeskVac 250. Wow, it looks an awful lot like a microwave. Maybe, Tom. A DeskVac 250. It's a vacuum cleaner that is mounted onto your desk or table. So we can suck up anything around it, provided that it's right in front of it and within the 15 to 20 centimeter range. Wow, such reach, such reach. 
Well, what, what's so great to this in comparison to, say, like a normal vacuum? <laughs> Oh, well, Tom, have you ever used one of those crappy old-style vacuums? They're useless. You have to carry them around or drag them along the floor towards the dust. Like a chump! Like a chump! Well, it seemed to work so far for everyone else. Just because it works, Tom, doesn't mean it's a good thing. <laughs> the Desk Vac 250 is unique because instead of dragging it to the dust or the mess, you just drag the mess to it. Well, how does it work? Ah, oh, all you have to do is purchase the desk back 250 and mount it to your desk table or other waist height horizontal surface with the five 35 inch steel bolts. Then just switch it on and bam, it's ready to use. Ready to use, but Jacob, how do we get the dust over to it? I'm glad you asked. All you have to do is purchase the desk back 250 sister product, the DM Scooper Duper, and collect all the mess on the floor with this patented scooping technology. And then bring it over to the desk back 250 for collection. Whoa! Two products for the price of one, Jacob! What? No, no, don't be silly, Tom. <laughs> no, you can get the Desk Vac 250 and the DM Scooper Duper separately for just $499.99! What a bargain! That's still under a grand! That's right, Tom. And don't forget, these products can't be used without each other, so get them both now. Well, alright, folks. You heard the man. Get your hands on the Desk Vac 250 and the DM Scooper Duper for just $998.98 tonight. But in the meantime, hang around because we'll be back to give away some cash in the loot line giveaways after the break and hopefully he isn't drunk again. See you soon. <laughs>
and not just some guy who sells music through Instagram. Uh, we have for us in the studio tonight, the one and only Lucy Blast. Lucy, welcome. Hello, everyone. Oh, so Lucy, what's what's been happening? It's It's been a while since we've, uh, since we've spoken. Don't act like you know me. You're like, what, D grade at best? Well, hang on now. I got plenty of A's in school. Yeah, that's why you're on this show now. Oh, ouch. But I like Sunset. It's, it's got a bit of a rustic charm. Yeah, okay, whatever. Oh. So what are we going to talk about? Well, um, I guess we could talk about your new, your new movie. Tell us about that. Well, it's called Avenues of Time, and it's a drama about the love between a woman and a time-traveling robot. Whoa, a time-traveling robot? Who played that? Um, well, it's from a pretty underground actor. You probably haven't heard of him, but his name's uh, Jack Human. Did, did you just say Hugh Jackman? Like this part? No, no, like Jack Human. He's really different. Oh, oh well, I, I, I thought you were more interesting, but I, I was mistaken. Hey, I've been in some pretty important movies. Like, they're pretty popular. They're pretty popular? Well, what, what else have you, have you been in? Well, I've been in part two of um, Hunger Games Mockingjay. How long were you in that for? Well, I was in the background of the foreground for like over five seconds. Wow, that, that just sounds riveting. Look, if you don't want me here, there's oh, like no, plenty no, of Oh no, no, come on, stay, stay. You're a valuable member here at Sunset, a valuable guest, should I say, because we, we can't finish the show without you. Oh, so I'm important then? Y yes, I guess so. Well, all right then. So what's your next question? Well, when does it come out? When can we all see it? It comes out in January next year. Um, so it's available on DVD and it comes out in 4K IMAX 3D. Wow, that, what, what kind of 3D effects do you have there? Well, there's lots of 3D shots of me staring into the camera. So I think that'll be pretty interesting to the viewer. Hmm, but, but, but wait a minute, I can see you in 3D now. What's, what's so good about that? Well, uh, like normal people can't usually see me in 3D. So, um, I think it'll be a pretty great experience for them. Ah, oh, that is that is true. So so it will. Uh, well, any last remarks for this interview, Lucy Glass? Well, um, I just wanted to say that I'm super important, and that I'm looking for some work that would fit a superstar act. Hey, hey, hey! Now we're not an advertising platform, Lucy. We talk about things like sponsors, but we we do not advertise without pay, without you paying us. That's that's just crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, I had to pay a whole six dollars to sell my vacuum cleaner. Only four hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That's sold separately. Then, well, no last words from me then, Tom. Um, thanks for having me in the studio for a chat about Avenues of Time. Well, it seems we talked more about you than the movie, but, but no worries, no worries. Hope to have you in when you have your next big break there, Lucy. See you around. All right, Tom, see you. Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. I hope you learned a lot tonight and got to have a little fun along the way. Tune in next week for our season finale of Sunset. Yes, that's right, we're only three episodes long. Yeah, it's university budgets for you. <laughs> well, see you next week for our Christmas special. Good night. Hey, Stacy.